Hey, in this video, we're going to go through several big budget busters that happen to a lot of different people who are trying to plan an accessory dwelling unit. I'm going to show you how I look up addresses. You can use the same free tools to look up your address and you can see if there's any of these red flags or yellow flags and kind of think about how you can navigate those and how to identify them before spending a lot of money on your project. If you panic or you get overwhelmed, don't worry. Uh, leave a comment below and use the link in the description to go share your project with me on howtoadu.com and, uh, and I can help, you know? Uh, but hopefully a lot of you will be able to use this video and the free tools inside it to learn how to do this on your own and uh, you're gonna become a little ADU ninja yourself. All right, let's do it. So first go to build.symbium.com and plug in your address. And they, they specialize, they've coded a lot of regulations, uh, the state level regulations into this software. And then sometimes a local jurisdiction will also pay them and work with them to get their local ordinances coded. Like if you're in LA, I'm pretty sure it's awesome. In other places, it's a little, it's a little uh, more based on state code. And they say like, hey, check your local ordinances. All right, first address we're gonna look up is in Burbank. And this is a good uh, example. Uh, all right, I pasted the address in and it's saying it doesn't find it. That's because uh, it's a database and you have to type it very specifically. If you just delete uh, until you get to, and now it prefills, see, ah, oh, you meant drive. Don't spell it out. And it's the right uh, street in Burbank still, just needed to spell it differently. Okay, now here's a great example where this, this uh, individual was ready to rock, had a beautiful idea, vision for their ADU, but right out the gate, this property is located in a very high fire hazard severity zone. To learn the requirements for this property, contact your city, and it has a link to the planning division in Burbank, which is super helpful. And uh, from there, you can contact the planning department or have somebody like me uh, talk to the planning department for you. But that's, that's a big roadblock, right? Um, one of the very serious conditions that can challenge an AGU project is being in a WUI, a f high fire hazard severity zone, that kind of thing. Because it's, um, it's, it's a, a real game. It can be a game stopper. It can be a show stopper. Uh, so the very first thing we did with this, uh, with this person was say, Hey, this is really serious. So before you spend a ton of money, let's, let's do a pre-check with the city about what they would allow. Burbank also happens to be pretty sassy. They've got one of the funniest ADU ordinances. It talks about cat, uh, horse excrement for like two paragraphs. Um, because, because they, uh, so they, well, they, they have, they have very specific rules about what kind of residential zoning should have an ADU. And, um, and they, they had a bad experience with the new state code uh, that kind of wiped away some of their very well thought out re reservations about letting people build ADUs in the middle of horse stables. Um, so long story short, Burbank is a delicate situation. And, uh, and before this customer spent a ton of money, um, we, we got to say, hey, this is what we need to check out first. Let's talk to the city of Burbank, work with them on your project. And that's underway now, right? It, it's, it's much better to find out early that you're going to have this challenge than to develop a whole plan set uh, to go get a bunch of contractors and then find out you're in a fire hazard zone, right? Step one, check for the red flag. Okay, uh, we're going to check another address. Um, this one's in San Pedro. Comes up South Patton Avenue, San Pedro. Perfect. All right, here you see it's got a rendering of the law and it says an ADU should be allowed. But notice here it says because your property is located in a specific plan area, additional rules may impact an ADU built here. Contact the planning department. And again, they have a helpful link to the planning department. LA's got a bunch of specific areas and what those can be, they can include historic districts, they can include uh, just special districts that are zoned are meant to be used a certain way. Um, you know, one time I, in my former career uh, as a, wine, a winery, <laughs> I, uh, I, I had a tasting room downtown and we used it as an office. 
and, and in the downtown specific plan of my city, they said, hey, you can't have an office on the first floor. It needs to be a tasting room. It needs to be customer facing. And so we, we had to work with that specific plan in order to meet the needs of the city for that mixed use building. And the same kind of thing can happen here. In this particular case, I would say not only is it in a specific plan area and a community plan area of San Pedro, but notice here, site challenges, it is in the coastal zone. And so all of this piles up. Now there's things we can do about each of those, but they become the primary issue that we wanna look into before you, you spend a bunch of money. Um, unfortunately, you know, some, sometimes a homeowner like this one uh, engages a contractor and start spending money before they've looked into the basics. And so that they found out that they had to apply, you know, for a $10,000 permit from the coastal zone, and they'd already spent a bunch of money with a, securing a contractor and doing plans. And they felt like they were really trapped in, in a corner. Um, and, I, you know, that's a shame. Uh, it turns out, you know, just because you're in a coastal zone doesn't mean you need to spend $10,000 on that coastal zone permit. Uh, there's a lot of other options, which we'll get to in a separate video. Leave me a comment if you want more information about that. But um, but this particular case, they, they felt really trapped behind the eight ball. Um, okay. And so that's two good examples where Symbium really shows you a lot about what the property challenges are. And it's just, it's instant. You go to build.symbium.com, bingo, bango, boom. Pretty cool process. First, first look, this is a great way to do it. Okay, now I'm going to do a property where Symbium um, is still awesome, but it will not show you the problem. Uh, this is a funny case, but we'll talk a little bit about it. So you see they have a huge lot, big rural county lot um, in Turlock. California law allows an ADU here. You may have city, your city may have more restrictions. I think that should say county um, uh, in any case. We're assuming it's a single family home and, and uh, it is, but uh, let's get to that soon. And then it's got all the information. It does not list any site challenges. Okay. Now what this homeowner knew that Symbium isn't telling them is that they, uh, in a, a long time ago, I think their, their parent, uh, who was the owner of the property at the time, signed a Williamson Act agreement. And that's uh, sort of like an ag preservation thing. It's a long story. There's a bill called the Williamson Act. Uh, and when people, when you sign it, you get, you get uh, a big tax break. But part of the deal is you cannot build uh, on that lot in a way that would de detract from the agricultural nature of the property. And that's why you get that ag tax break. Now, they want to build an ADU. Well, but they're bound by this Williamson agreement that they made um, and that that can't be done. You can back out of the Williamson Act. I think it takes like 10 years after you back out of it of paying full taxes before you officially can start building again. So it's kind of, you know, you're, you're, you're behind the eight ball. ADU um, was, was not always possible if you're in that agreement. Uh, some counties have explicitly, it's usually rural county lots, not like city lots. Some counties have explicitly said, hey, if you've signed the Williamson Agreement, um, you cannot build an ADU. Other counties have not taken a stance on it yet. And so uh, we called Sacramento County. They were not sure. They had not passed a, uh, an ordinance one way or the other yet. They had not offered guidance. But... Um, we were like, okay, it's a pro it might get hung up there, so let's not invest too much money. Let's find out first. Let's do a pre-check. The other thing is uh, this this particular lot was potentially qualified for workforce housing, which is different than an ADU and allowed in agricultural scenarios. So, you know, they had options to explore because they found this early on. Okay. Um, we're going to teach you one of the things that, that can really hamper a project. Um, you know, all of our lots are limited in size in California and the world. Nobody has an infinite lot. <laughs> so one of the benefits of the new state level laws about ADUs in California is that as long as you respect a four foot side and rear yard setback, you can build an ADU up to 16 feet high under 800 square feet and some other stuff. There's some other privileges, but like 
just that basic part really opens up a lot of backyards. You can fit an ADU in a lot of lots thanks to those rear and side yard setbacks. That's a big part of the rule change. Um, unfortunately, if, you, if there are other problems with the lot, like easement issues, or in this case, a creek setback, you might find uh, that you, you don't have enough space to put an ADU where you wanted to put the ADU. So let's take a look at this lot, right? It's on this Glorietta Boulevard, nice big house, big back lot. And they think, oh, this would be perfect for an accessory dwelling unit. And at a first glance, it looks like they're fine. You know, everything's allowed. That's cool. No site challenges. Looks good. But they called me and I am astute. <laughs> so I, I said, what's this little creek? What's the San Pablo Creek doing there? And, uh, and they said, oh, yeah, there's a creek in the back of the property. It's, it's not really clear if it touches our property or not. And I looked at another map because... This is important. You never want to get surprised, right? You want, you want to know this stuff ahead of time. And on Google Maps, that creek goes right through the property. And you can look at the satellite image. It's kind of hard to tell. There's some trees there, so you can't really see. So first thing on the phone call, well, after I looked at the property, I said, hey, talk, talk to me about this creek. And he said, yeah, it's kind of confusing. There's some slope. It's kind of really far in the back. We should be able to build. We're, we're not that close to it. So we, we, we took a harder look, though, and the creek setbacks in Arinda are such that, and the creek placement, technically on a map, is such that they really couldn't start building an ADU until, like, here. And that, that put a real kibosh on the type of project that they had in mind. They still had options that we could explore, but that creek, you want to find out about that early. And that's why it's the first thing I bring up when I see a creek on the property. I'm like, let's talk about creek setbacks. Let's look at the rules in your city or county and figure out if you can build close to that creek or not. It's a big deal. So I like, I like this example for a few different reasons. One, even though I love Symbium and you should use it for a first pass, shouldn't only use Symbium. You can see the creek came much farther on the Google map than it did on the, the map that Symbium was using. And, um, and this ended up being pretty close to reality, the Google version. So, uh, yeah, just just uh, in that preliminary sweep, use all the free resources you can. Uh, the other thing is just because you got a big lot doesn't mean you can use all of it. And so, you know, uh, it, it pays to do your due diligence or talk to somebody like me who, who's kind of seen, seen, seen it all. No, I haven't seen it all, but I've seen a lot. All right, we're going to go to Walnut Creek. So here's another property where it looked pretty chill, right? Uh, big lot, um, lots of space on Christmas tree court. And we thought uh, we were good to go. The first thing I noticed though, is in the email that this person sent me, they said, hey, I'm thinking about building this size ADU uh, about five feet back from um, this road and like right there. Uh, any advice? And I was like, hey, the first red flag in this story, oops, the first red flag in your story is you're talking about putting an ADU a few feet away from this road. And this is, a, this is something that catches people. The rules in California now say that you have, you have to respect a four foot setback from the side and rear property lines. But there's not such a generous rule about the front property line. The front setback can still be, uh, you know, 15 feet, 20 feet. It, it depends on the front setbacks in your neighborhood. It can, it, and, you know, they're, they're, they tend to be reasonable. Nobody has like a 300 foot setback because then they wouldn't have been able to build primary houses. But like it kind of, it, it, the, the law allows for the same front yard setbacks that apply to primary homes to also apply to ADUs. And you see where this is going. He's a corner lot. So even though the, he thinks this is the front of his lot, this is also a front of the lot. Um, and so we, we looked up the uh, county rules. I know it says Walnut Creek, but he's technically an unincorporated county. And the unincorporated county rules uh, required something like 15 feet. I, I forget the exact number, 
But when we looked it up, it said, okay, that's a problem because uh, you're going to have to go back farther from McConnell Lane than you originally thought. And, uh, and, and it's good to figure that out early uh, and, and, and not late. The other one that's really common is through lots. So if you have a, fr a front street and then there's another street on the back of the house, that's a different situation than a corner lot. And you just got to look up. It's not in the ADU code. It's in the normal building and planning code for your, your city or county. So you can't, you can't only read the ADU laws. You also got to know all the, all the local planning and, and building ordinances. So that's why professionals help. But this is a really common one. So if you're on a corner lot or um, a through lot, in a lot of ways, they're the best lots for ADUs. But do your research because you want to make sure you've positioned it and oriented it on the lot in a way that the planning um, office can approve. It's less of a deal breaker, but it's an interesting one. If you have a really long, deep lot, again, one of the best kinds of lots for an ADU because you can put it way in the back and you feel like you have a lot of privacy. This is a good example. This, this family had um, a very deep lot. So this homeowner is really excited because they got this gigantic lot. The house is positioned right up front and I can use right click measure distance and show. And they have over 200 feet behind the house that on that lot. So they can, they can go way back here, right? And do a four foot setback. And they still have this beautiful footprint in the back of the, of the lot. And they're like thinking, oh, we're going to have so much privacy. It's over 200 feet away from the main house. Great. And I have to be the one to say, hey, just yellow flag. Uh, when the fire department sees this, they're going to go, you are 300 feet away from the road. That's very hard for us to fight a fire if the back unit catches, right? And it was a rural lot, um, not a fire hazard zone or anything, just like this is what the fire department checks. And um, it's not a deal breaker, but what will happen is the fire department will say, hey, you got a, a fire, you know, fire safety. If you're that far back, you got to have fire sprinklers. And people always say, but Ryan, ADU law says if the main house doesn't need fire sprinklers, the ADU doesn't need fire sprinklers. And that's true. It, it says that, um, but it all, but the building code and <laughs> the, the, the allows for fire safety also says that you just can't build that far away from a fire hydrant. And then there's special rules in place that allow the fire department to give, to work with you and say, well, you can't build that far back normally but if you make a concession and put in fire sprinklers we'll let you build that far back and so it feels a little like they're forcing fire sprinklers on you even though the law says you don't need them and that's the, the, the law says you can't build that far away unless you get a special uh exemption from the fire safety department and and then they're giving you that exemption in exchange for the sprinklers so this is a good example of uh, not a deal breaker but a yellow flag and, and, you know, this homeowner's got options. So they could, if they want to build their unit up here, that's that's much easier. Or if they want to talk about putting in a path, uh, a driveway that's big enough for a fire truck, sometimes that's something that the fire department will accept. Um, and, and maybe there's a water pump back, uh, sorry, uh, a cistern or something back on the back of the lot that has a certain amount of water. And, and maybe the fire department will allow for that instead of the sprinklers. Um, lots of things you can do as long as, as long as you're talking to the city, planning proactively, but if you don't, if you don't, you know, if you don't think about it and you budget your entire project, assuming no fire sprinklers and no, no fire hazard problems, then you're going to get a big nasty surprise in the tens of thousands of dollars sometimes, uh, late in the game. Right. And so that's, that's a big bozo. No, no. If you want more free tools and resources related to your ADU, a whole playlist about that. If you want to stay up to date with ADU news, playlist about that. And then, hey, if you want my eyes to look at your project, go to my website, share your project with me, shoot me an email, uh, drop a comment below. Let's build some housing. Let's get some ADUs. <laughs>